Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, um, here I'm going to tell you about our recent work on understanding the magnetic pseudo gap um, and the crucial role of vertex corrections for it. And I'm Wenxing, I'm a new faculty from the University of Utah, and most of the work I'm going to talk about is done when I was a postdoc at KITP. Uh, so first, like, uh, let me thank uh, my collaborators, uh, these three gentlemen based at University of Minnesota, Andrew Chubukov, Jen Wang, and Rafael Fernandez. And it is based on these two works uh, we posted on ICAP uh, this year. So to start, uh, let me show you um, what do uh, I mean by pseudo gap here. So it has been seen uh, in uh, various kinds of strongly correlated systems, and let me use the schematic phase diagram of Cooper's as an example. So uh, one of the clear signature of the pseudo gap is, to, is the electron spectral function uh, on the Fermi surface at the hot spots, uh, which is a point I uh, showed in, the, uh, in red that is most sensitive to the antiferromagnetic uh, uh, fluctuations. And uh, let me show the spectral function at this point for uh, various, uh, in various types of states in the phase diagram. So this is the spectral function, uh, symmetrize the spectral function in the normal state. And uh, uh, in the ordered state, say the superconductivity state or antiferromagnetism, the spectral function is uh, peaked at finite frequency, and this gap is determined by the um, size of the order parameter. And for the pseudo gap, uh, what they mean is, well, there is no long range order, but the spectral functions still so, uh, show maximum at finite energy. And uh, the question is how to obtain the pseudo gap, uh, and it, which must come from some uh, strong correlations. And there have been various scenarios uh, to understand the formation of pseudo gap. Here I'm going to take a, um, I'm going to consider a magnetic thermal fluctuation scenario near the SDW criticality. So what we consider is to ask what, how the pseudo gap develops as uh, we deviate from the SDW order at finite temperature. So there have been several multi, uh, supportive evidence of this scenario. Uh, one of the, um, for example, uh, in the numerical studies, uh, the, um, the, DMF, uh, the uh, fluctuation diagnostic method uh, in the DMFT have shown that the short range anti, uh, the antiferromagnetic uh, fluctuations dominate over other fluctuation channels, uh, for example, the particle-particle char uh, uh, of superconductivity fluctuation, as well as uh, spin uh, uh, fluctuation at other momentum. Uh, and also, uh, it was shown that the static fluctuation dominate over the um, dynamical fluctuations, where the static part is shown as the uh, red region here. And there are also other evidence from experiments that show uh, a large range of collective short range magnetic fluctuations in the phase diagram. And uh, with these motivations, uh, we will consider, I will consider the magnetic thermal fluctuations, uh, which turns out to be analytically controlled and, uh, uh, allow, and which allows us to do a lot of quantitative study in a great detail. Uh, and here, uh, I'm, uh, so while we are not the first uh, uh, groups uh, first, uh, to think about these uh, scenarios, actually it has been studied for uh, like two decades. So our recent exploration in this direction are motivated by several advancements uh, in the field in the last few years. And uh, one of the, uh, for example, there have been uh, many nice numerical developments uh, to study the uh, Hubbard model at weak and intermediate coupling. And uh, now let me walk you through uh, what are their findings and uh, what are the, uh, why they motivate our uh, study here. So this is a, a heroic work led by 
uh, Anton Josh, uh, which studied, uh, compared the different numerical methods such as DMFT and the Monte Carlo studies. So they studied the nearest neighbor Hubbard model at half filling, uh, where the Fermi surface uh, without uh, the interactions is uh, perfectly nested. And when uh, interactions are added, uh, as you can see from the horizontal axis, uh, so they obtain the following phase diagram, where you can see the pseudo gap region as long as uh, one turn on the interactions. And interestingly, we found that this pseudo gap uh, is, um, temp uh, is present, is temperature independent. And this is quite consistent with experiments. And uh, to interpret uh, this finding of temperature independence of pseudo gap while the interaction is still weak, <coughs> they consider a, a one loop, uh, one can consider a weak coupling uh, uh, st uh, scenario. So from a one loop calculation, one can show that the pseudo gap is proportional to temperature times the log of the spin correlation length. And the question here is, what is the, uh, what is the temperature dependence of the spin correlation length, which tells us what is the scale of the pseudo gap? And on the one hand, if we want to uh, start with a one loop calculation starting from the Fermi liquid to be consistent with this one loop uh, calculation for the self energy, we would find that the spin correlation length is temperature independent, meaning that this pseudo gap scale is strongly temperature dependent. However, numerically, we find that the uh, spin correlation length is exponential in one over temperature. And to understand this observation, uh, one can uh, guess that maybe it is uh, the correlation length is similar to the uh, nonlinear sigma model behavior for a localized spin, namely the Heisenberg model. Um, and with this uh, dependence of the spin correlation length, one can find that the pseudo gap doesn't depend on temperature, uh, which is similar to the mod physics. Uh, however, the question is that uh, how can one uh, how can one achieve this uh, localized spin behavior starting from a Fermi liquid? So in our uh, minimal model, we want to uh, go we go beyond one loop calculation and show that by going to infinite series, uh, starting from a Fermi liquid, uh, we can understand the pseudo gap energy scale. And the second motivation uh, of this work is uh, to ask a general question. Uh, a pseudo gap in the precursor scenario, a generic property near an ordered state. Uh, the, the answer is it's not necessarily the case. It turns out that the kinematics of how electrons scatter with collective excitations matter here. And in our work, we want to have a better understanding of this kinetic, uh, kinematics. And we find that uh, it is crucial to consider the vertex diagrams uh, for the pseudo gap. And this also gives us uh, some idea uh, to understand better the physical models to control the strength of pseudo gap, uh, which might be realized in other platforms to simulate the Hubbard model, uh, such as uh, other lattice uh, geometries. And with uh, these motivations, now let me tell you, uh, introduce the model and outline uh, what we found uh, to uh, <coughs> and so we consider a single band Hubbard model on the square lattice, and this is, uh, so we consider some particular parameters that uh, work um, for the uh, doped uh, cuprates, and, uh, uh, we, uh, and the, the, by, uh, by either increasing the Hubbard U or decreasing the doping, the system can go from a Fermi liquid to an SDW order state. And for simplicity, we just consider this antiferromagnetic order. And when we look at the spectral function of this uh, model, uh, at the mean field level, we know that uh, in the, at high temperature, uh, in the uh, normal Fermi liquid, the spectral function is peaked at uh, zero frequency uh, and uh, 
when it goes to the spin disk, uh, SDW ordered state, if we look at the spectral function at these hotspots, uh, which are gapped by the order of the spectral function, it is peaked at finite energy. And uh, uh, however, uh, I will show that this mean field picture breaks down uh, in uh, near the transition temperature. So what happens is that uh, starting from this uh, spin density wave order state, as we increase the temperature uh, for, uh, first, uh, the spectral function, uh, th this gap decreases. And uh, in, in the meantime, there is another, um, the, sp the spectral width start to fill in at a finite energy. And as a result, we can see uh, two gap structures. One is determined by the spin density wave order, and another is purely driven by interaction, and we define it as a pseudo gap energy. And at the new temperature, this uh, SDW gap vanishes, and uh, we are left with only the pseudo gap. And as temperature further increases, um, there will be more spectral weight filling in at zero frequency, and we will see uh, this pseudo, uh, pseudo gap metal, and only at a much higher temperature, uh, we, uh, the system recovers to this Fermi liquid behavior. So in the rest of the talk, uh, I will tell you about what we find of the interplay between these uh, three energy scales, the SDW order delta, the pseudo gap energy, and this characteristic energy for the normal Fermi liquid. And uh, uh, I will show you that in a, wide, in a range of this phase diagram, uh, the, the pseudo gap energy is temperature independent. And uh, uh, also from this quantitative study, we are able to identify the range of magnetic pseudo gap in the Hubbard model. And uh, finally, I will uh, edit this, these calculations. I will tell you about uh, our understanding of the crucial role of vertex corrections uh, in the pseudo gap formation. Okay, so the, 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 the scenario of magnetic thermal fluctuations giving rise to pseudo gap has been started in uh, one loop calculation like back uh, to three decades ago. And first I'm going to tell you about uh, what, what is the picture there. So the intuition is very simple. So at finite temperature, uh, we can compare uh, when the system is uh, like in a short range anti-ferromagnetic -fer ordered state, uh, we can compare two length scales. One is a thermal de Broglie wave length and another is a spin correlation length. And when the temperature is much greater than this uh, characteristic fermion energy, meaning that the, the Broly wavelength is much smaller than the spin correlation length, the electrons effectively see the uh, spins in the antiferromagnetic ordered state. As a result, their, uh, they, their uh, like spectral function will be high, uh, different from a free electron and they will see a gap, they will have a gap. And in the computation, uh, one can turn this picture to computing the one loop self energy for the electrons uh, due to purely thermal fluctuations and find that there is a dimensionless thermal coupling lambda. And when it is greater than the critical lambda, which is order one, the spectral function develops pseudo gap. However, uh, this, is lam this lam critical lambda is of order one. So when uh, we are really in the pseudo gap phase, it is like a strong coupling theory. So we need to ask the question whether this one loop calculation is enough or not. And to uh, answer this question, uh, we, uh, we consider the infinite summation of relevant diagrams. And uh, to achieve it, we do a, a simplification, namely at large lambda, the energy we are interested in is larger than the, uh, this uh, character, characteristic fermion energy. As a result, uh, we can pull this Green's function uh, inside this uh, uh, integral out of the integral and uh, we arrive at this simplified self-energy expression. 
And if you do some simple calculation, you will find that this self energy uh, is proportion uh, is uh, in power of one over frequency, uh, and this energy delta tilde is uh, uh, determined by the temperature times the uh, log of the spin correlation length. And this is very similar similar to the calculation in the SDW ordered state uh, with a different uh, delta tilde. And with this simplification, uh, we can do this computation, uh, the summation both in the uh, below the nail temperature and above the nail temperature. And we can compute self-consistently the SDW order, the chemical potential below the nail temperature and the spin correlation length and the chemical potential above the temperature. Uh, I will skip the details of the calculation, but want to highlight that this is not an RPA or L.A. Ashberg type of summation, but one can do it accurately uh, for thermal fluctuations. And, uh, and so this is our results. And by, uh, so this is how the data, the, uh, the SDW order, the pseudo gap and the fermion energy behaves at different temperatures. And by comparing the magnitude of the uh, we can uh, come up, we, we can uh, like uh, obtain the spectral function uh, in deep in the SDW ordered state, in the pseudo gap state, and also uh, in the uh, and also uh, <coughs> uh, in the normal Fermi liquid state. And uh, furthermore, uh, we can compute the uh, we can compare the spin correlation lines we obtained from our calculation uh, with the DMFT study and find that indeed this uh, psi is proportional to uh, exponential of inverse temperature and that gives rise to a constant of the pseudo gap. And another interesting thing we find is that uh, the temperature uh, in the pseudo gap region is much smaller than the characteristic fermion energy which means that uh, actually they are proving the physics when the thermal de Broglie wavelength is much smaller than the spin correlation length, but nevertheless, we still see the pseudo gap um, feature. Mm -hmm. In your calculation, does the result even depend on the ratio of the Broglie wavelengths and temperature? A uh, and no, the it correlation? doesn't explicitly There's no so crossover up. whatsoever. Uh, there, As you go through that uh, value. So at very, uh, very, very close to the nail temperature, uh, it is, uh, let me show. So very clo uh, close to the nail temperature, there's, there is a very small region where the, the Broly wavelength is smaller than the spin correlation length. But uh, in a wide region, it doesn't show up, but this is a quantitative calculation. We don't have a, a parameter uh, to compare that uh, like in our calculation, like when we set up the computation. And uh, uh, finally, this is a phase, uh, this is a phase diagram uh, we obtained and uh, uh, right about the uh, uh, SDW order state, we identified two pseudo gap uh, skill and the one uh, comes from the infinite <coughs> summation I mentioned earlier and another part uh, I will show that we can do it from a one loop calculation. And uh, <coughs> so to emphasize uh, all of these pseudo gap features cannot be obtained from a self consistent one loop calculation, namely the computation like this, uh, like one did in the uh, uh, Ali Ashberg theory. So the question is, uh, so the next question for us is to understand <coughs> like uh, wh wh why, uh, wh what is the role played by the vertex corrections such that this self-consistent self one-loop calculation breaks down. And uh, to understand that, uh, we, uh, it turns out that it is convenient to write down the full grains function, uh, so the infinite summation in this continuous, uh, continued fraction representation. And we find that for all the pseudo, uh, models without a pseudo gap, uh, 
this continued this parameters kappa that enters in the continued fraction is a straight line as a function of the uh, order g. <coughs> and uh, however, uh, if we uh, tune a little bit of the continued fractions, we find that when the odd number of uh, kappa uh, is greater, uh, is above this straight line, the system shows a pseudo gap. Well, in the opposite limit, when the odd number uh, of kappa uh, is below the straight line, the system doesn't show the pseudo gap. And furthermore, if we write down the self energy uh, in terms of the full grain function times the vertex correction, we find that in the pseudo, uh, in, without the pseudo gap, the vertex function uh, mimics the self consistent uh, one loop result where the imaginary part is nearly zero and the real part is about uh, a constant. However, when the system shows the pseudo gap behavior, the vertex function is, fundamental, is very different and it diverges at around, around the zero frequency. And also you can see the development of imaginary part in the vertex correction. And uh, uh, so this idea will also be helpful for us to understand the pseudo gap at zero temperature. And this is the ongoing work uh, with Andrew, Zach, and Shang Shun. And uh, with that, uh, I will stop here and put the summarized, uh, summary slide here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, questions. Let's start on this side. I, I didn't follow all the technical details, uh, and I haven't read the paper, so my question may be completely relevant. But did you actually calculate a vertex correction going beyond single loop, or uh, are you just explaining why it's important? I, I missed the, I, this is the punchline, but I missed it, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because yeah. calculation of vertex corrections, you know, yeah, are very I, difficult, except yeah. on a hand-waving level. Right, so okay. I will calculate, the answer is we calculate the vertex corrections, but the way we calculate the vertex function is a little bit different from what people did. So what we did is, it turns out it's easier for us to obtain the full grains function. And once we obtain the full grains function, by summing up an infinite series of diagrams, but uh, uh, that, that part is, uh, can be done, and uh, there are, this idea was also as developed by Look, I, I have to talk to you, I'm not understanding. Uh, uh -huh. How can you calculate the exact Green's function in anybody problem? I'm sure you're saying oh, something yeah. very specific. There, there are simplifications. That's what are these what I'm asking? You have zero range interaction? So and we, we consider the thermal fluctuations okay. only. Okay. All right, good. That is the question. Yeah, I have a non-technical question. The, um, there are two schools of thought mostly about the pseudo gap. One is what you represented, and the other one is to say it's because of preformed pairs. Now, uh, for D-wave pairs, um, so I, I, I'm just wondering if you would agree with the following statement. For D-wave pairs, uh, these preformed pairs would already have anti ferromagnetic like or singlet-like nearest neighbor correlations also. So maybe those two schools of thought are not uh, opposite to each other. They actually talk about the same thing and even having the same origin. What Do you have thoughts about this? So you mean uh, like anti ferromagnetic versus the D-wave uh, pairing uh, for the uh, pseudo gap? Right. Um, so uh, I, I only thought about like technically one would do a different uh, computation um, and uh, in terms of uh, what can be predicted. Um, so my, my, my take is the following. So what we can do is uh, we, can, we can know uh, what is the range of the pseudo gap from the thermal uh, magnetic fluctuations. And uh, uh, it turns out that it is only right above the SDW ordered state. And uh, uh, once we go beyond, uh, go to this critical fine, uh, it turns out uh, our, we, we cannot get any pseudo gap. So, but for the superconductivity, if for example, if you ask about uh, uh, the total of the corporates, 
uh, this pseudo, pseudo, uh, superconductivity region is here. And I would think the pseudo gap, naively the pseudo gap from the D wave superconductivity is on top of the, uh, this uh, dome, superconductivity dome. And that is different from what we see here. Okay, so you think it's different. You showed an expression for the self energy. Uh -huh. Is there any singularity in your self energy? No, are there poles in your self energy? Yeah, yeah, there is a one over omega. So there's a pole in your self energy. Right. Is this, so, I guess my next question then is, how is this a well-defined expansion? There's no uh, real pole in the self energy. So, okay, what, so I, I didn't do the calculation, so <laughs> your collaborator seems to differ. So what's up with the self energy if there is a singularity in it, like a pole, it means perturbation theory is breaking down. Uh, you, you mean like the, uh, for, for the, um... In other words, if, is there a zero of your single particle green function? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I, so, yeah, there, right, there, there is a one over omega in the self energy. However, uh, in, in the like a bare, uh, in the one loop self energy, However, the region where this uh, calculation is valid is uh, only above a characteristic energy uh, V times Fermi. So in the energy range of our interest, uh, there is no singularities. I see. Does that answer your question? Okay. It's a continuation from perturbation theory. So there is a behavior which very much resembles pole, but there is never true pole. There is never true zero in the green. Okay, uh, thanks, very nice talk. So, uh, just so I understand correctly, in order to really do the calculation directly based on Green's functions, you need to assume uh, the, the dash, the wavy lines, thermal fluctuations are really like a delta function in Q, right? Uh, right, uh, right. Uh, mm, no, not exactly. Uh -huh. So that you don't have to do momentum integrals for every uh, loop, right? Uh, the mo yeah, yeah, we did the momentum integrals, but oh. we pulled the Green's function out. I see, I see. But that's essentially assume, similar, equivalent with assuming it's a delta function in Q. Uh, so, right? yeah, this, calc this calculation is uh -huh. valid when uh, in the frequency range, uh, when omega is greater than Vf times uh -huh. cosi, inverse okay. cosi. The, you can pull it out, but you still yeah. need to do the momentum integral for the near, wavy line. Near the Q equals to pi pi. I see, got it. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any comment on the pseudo gap on the other side of the QCP? Uh, <coughs> You mean on this side? No, no, no. no this side. Yeah. Uh, so, Is there a pseudo gap there at all? So currently, uh, we are thinking about the zero temperature, temperature calculation in this range, uh, like uh, considering the vertex corrections. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea is that uh, when the, uh, it's also a particular model uh, when the self energy is much greater than the Fermi bandwidth, uh, for, uh, Fermi energy, then we can do a similar procedure of pulling out the Green's function and uh, considering the vertex corrections. And in that limit, uh, we can uh, see the pseudo gap features. Like, so there is a pseudo gap feature yeah. in the Fermi liquid regime also. Uh, yeah, yeah. More questions? Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.